Alright, mic check, check, I'm good. So I'm Max Ron, Max, Max Ron, CWB Association Welding Podcast, Pod, Pod, Podcast. Today we have a really cool guest, Welding Podcast. The show is about to begin. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the CWB Association Podcast. I'm Max Ron with you guys. As always, we're here to have another awesome show. Today we have a lady from Milton, Ontario, who is going to tell us about her crazy road and and path to her career. She sent me an email kind of explaining it all, and I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to let her do the explaining. But, Daniela, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. So, D- Daniela Torelli, right away, I was like, oh man, she's Italian, <laughs> so she can be a firecracker. <laughs> Daniela Torelli. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And like we were just talking before the show, not Tortellini. She doesn't appreciate that. <laughs> she's going to straighten you out if you guys make that mistake. <laughs> All right, Daniela. Yeah. So, you look pretty young. Tell me, how old are you? I'm only 27. Oh, you're just a I... young pup. <laughs> I get ID'd everywhere I go. <laughs> I tell people my age and they're just like, really? Like, I thought you were maybe 18 or something. Man, I haven't looked 18 since I was like six. So <laughs> I got, <laughs> I was able to grow a beard when I was like 12. So uh, <laughs> I was that guy in high school that bought beer for everybody else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Daniela, you, uh, where, where, did, where were you born? Where did you uh, grow up? So I grew up in Tottenham, Ontario, and um, I still currently reside here. Um, been here for majority of my life, 23 years, a small little town. Man, I've had a lot of people on the show from small towns. I'm missing out on something, I think. Small town, big dreams. <laughs> oh, I have big town, big dreams, so I don't know how that works. There you go. <laughs> so you grew up in small town, and uh, and you went to, I, I imagine, elementary school, high school there. Um, when you came out of high school, were you thinking welding, or what were you thinking? Kind of what was your plan? I did not think welding, actually. Um, I've kind of always worked with horses and animals, and I my goal was to be a vet technician. A vet so technician. out of high school, yeah, um, out of high school, I um, was working at a few horse farms, and then I started working at some vet clinics and got actually a lot of experience. I worked in eMERGE clinics uh, for a couple of years, and my goal was to become a vet technician or... Um, but that was not the case. <laughs> what is a vet technician? So they're like the vet helper, like a vet nurse or? Yeah, like a nurse pretty much. Yeah. So they're the ones assisting the doctors and, um, and you know, they nearly, they don't really get paid as much as they should. And I learned yeah. that real quick. I'd imagine that's a tough gig and probably pretty hard to stay emotionally neutral with animals, you know, like yeah. Yeah, that'd be hard. Yeah, I mean, I, I loved it. I, you know, I, some days I think about, you know, maybe going back to it one day, mm-hmm. but they just, for independency and making a, a living, it wasn't worth me going to school to become a vet technician for, you know, three years. It was going to take me 10 years to pay off the schooling, let alone. So um, I decided not to go to school for it. No, and, and like, <laughs> you know, you say you worked in Vet Emerge. In my mind, I see horses and wheelchairs. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but uh, it's just it's just it's something the, I imagine now. Yeah, <laughs> it's when you work nights, and you know, unfortunately, you know, dogs and cats they get hit by cars, and they're you're the people that they're rushing to yeah. with you know a traumatic experience, and uh, yeah, it was it was quite the experience, that's for sure. So that's a pretty heavy responsibility job, you know that that that's already going to say something about your personality. Like you're willing to commit. That's, that's not a job. Most people just walk into like any type of medical type work. You got to have a real feeling for it. Now you're doing it and you love it, but it's not paying the bills. Well, what's, what's going on there? Financially? No, it wasn't. Uh, I was really, really looking for my independence and, uh, and one day I just, I, I needed a change in life and I sat down and I was like, okay, like, what am I good at? Like, what, what interests me? And, you know, I was looking into the trades and, you know, wanting to have a good income and uh, looking for my independence. And I thought, you know, what am I good at? 
And I, I remember a moment back in high school. I was uh, the only girl in shop class. I took the automotive class. And, you know, they teach you the basics of welding in automotive class. And my, my teacher, I wish I could, I wish I could uh, find him today and tell him because he told me, you know, in grade 12, you know, you're pretty good at welding. You should, you should consider it a career. And, I, you know, as a girl in high school, I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Like, yeah, didn't even cross <laughs> my mind. I'm like, you're crazy. Like, no thanks. And I remember that moment, you know, years later down the road. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to try it out. So you're sitting there with a catalog of, of trades in front of you. Which is, yeah, which is, I was which, like, no. <laughs> which college? Uh, I was yeah. like, no, I can't, I can't do, uh, don't want to deal with any shitty situations. <laughs> <laughs> which college did you end up going to pardon which college did you go to um i ended up going to uh sheridan college okay um and at the time they were in oakville so i actually quit my full-time job um well sorry i i applied so the program i was supposed to start in a couple of months and they still had their applications open and i was like you know what like i'm gonna apply i mean the chances of me getting accepted i was like you know program is supposed to start in like two months. I'm like, there's no way they're probably accepting people, but it's probably an error. So I, I took the chance. I applied a week later, I got accepted and I'm like, holy crap, <laughs> quit my uh, full-time job. And uh, I told my family, I'm like, yeah, I'm uh, in two months. I'm uh, starting my welding career. And they were just like, what? Pardon? <laughs> is anyone was, else in uh, your family? Is anyone else in your family in the trades? Um, nope. Uh, my, my dad works for like, a we have like a, a metal manufacturing company. Uh, my dad was a millwright, uh, but now he's more in the designs. He's, uh, he's the guy that designs everything. Um, but he was the only one that really got into it in our family. So you, so you've seen but, welding and you were around it through that a, a little bit. Yeah, not so much. I mean, my my dad tried to keep kind of the family. It was a family business, and my dad tried to keep, you know, his kids out of it because, you know, there's always <laughs> drama, and he wanted everybody to everyone to have their own route in life, and he, you know, really pushed everyone to follow their own dreams. He necessarily never wanted us to follow his, so. Your dad sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he's a pretty nice guy. You know, I, I am very thankful for everything he's done for me, but uh but yeah, you know, being Italian, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, a lot of, it was a big difference in the family when I said, you know, I, I want to be a welder. I'm going to go to school for welding, and I was kind of shunned out a bit. And my family were a little, a little embarrassed because we're so Italian, and it was not in the Italian way of, you know, women in the trades. It, that was, you know, the men's job, and and my family were pretty kind of old fashioned, and. Uh, and yeah, I took a lot of, I had to deal with quite a bit of, of changing my career and for them to accept it. it took a while. I thought Rosie the Riveter was Italian. <laughs> I, no, I'm not even. I'm, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of always family, thought she was. <laughs> she kind of yeah, looks like Madonna. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> for sure. so your family's a little bit weirded out by it, but it's something that you decide that you're going to kind of, you know, I'm going to go try it out. You, yeah. go, you head down the road to, to Sheridan which is a huge college. There's lots of cool stuff going on, like with all the campuses and, and, um, and you start, you said like basically a few weeks notice, you know, yeah, pretty much. So you're I walking had, in was, and how did you feel? <laughs> I was scared shitless, <laughs> but you know what? In my head, I was like, it was only a one year program and it wasn't even, it was like eight months because you know, there's a break in between mm -hmm. the semester. So I'm like, you know what? It's only a year program. I'm going to just try it. If I don't like it, it's only a year of my life. You know, I'm, I'm going to try it and I'm going to learn from it either way. So I, I loved every moment of it. And I'm so proud of it because, you know, I had no help from my family. I, they didn't really, they weren't behind me on it. So I did this for myself and I did it on my own and I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. How did you do? Did you find that you, you were not bad as soon as you started? Did you find that you struggled or were you really um, good? I, I mean, I, I struggled. I, um, SMAW, I, I really couldn't get the hand of it. I, I really, <laughs> stick welding was not my, uh, my go-to. Um, 
I really liked TIG welding and um, GMAW. I love that. But yeah, I, I had some challenges and it was a whole learning curve because I, I'd never done any of those processes before. You know, oxy fuel cutting, like I never, never once tried it. So it was, it was a big learning curve, but I, I mean, I, I must've enjoyed it. It's hard to remember yeah. you know, that far ago. That was five years ago now. So it's hard to remember, but I, I'm still doing it today. So I must've loved it. <laughs> now in your class, when you got there, how, how big was your classroom? Like how, in your class? Um, there was probably, oh gosh, there was probably like, I would say around 15 students. There was, it was a pretty big class. Like, I mean, Sheridan's moved now. So they used to be in Oakville and now they're in Brampton, Ontario. So, um, things have probably changed with their program. So I'm not hundred percent sure how things are running there now, but, uh, and of, those 15, of those 15, how many were women? There was three of us i believe i believe there was only three and how many do you think are still welding today um i know what like out of the two women i know one that's still uh, we still keep in ch uh, touch over social media which is awesome and i know a few of the gentlemen that were welding too and they're still doing it that's the the great thing about social media is we can you know still keep track of everybody <laughs> Yeah, and you know, it's, it's really good that you bring that up because it is something that's really important. It's something that I'm trying to teach people of my generation to be like, you know, you need to get in touch with social media because you can't yeah. just tell young people, hey, you got to do things my way. Well, you know, they're really the ones in the driver's seat. We're kind of <laughs> we're kind of on the way out in the farm truck out back. We got to meet halfway <laughs> in the middle, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's got to go both ways. I mean, I'm, I'm Gen X, so I'm, I'm pretty old. I turned 45 this year, but I've always <laughs> been into social media. I think it's cool. Like, I just always thought it was a neat way. And plus, I'm an immigrant. So when Facebook came out, I was like, this is an awesome way to keep in touch with my family in South America. Okay. That's like really normally, like, I'd have to phone them. It'd be annoying. Or we could like MSN Messenger, which was like kind of lame. <laughs> right. So and uh, it was it was a good way to keep, kind of keep tabs on family and and i think that we need to bring that into welding i think you guys are going to bring it in anyways it's it's coming like it is yeah. what it is now honestly i tell everybody my he is 83 year old grandfather mm -hmm. uses facebook and i'm like if he can figure it out anybody can figure <laughs> it out and he keeps in touch with his family in italy and he loves it he's on it every day <laughs> yeah and there's no excuse right like i always give the example no of buying a new tv like let's say you it's Boxing Day, and you're going down, and you're buying a 65-inch TV, and you're super excited, and you get home, and you open it up, and you plug it in, and you have a brand new remote, and you've never used it before. It, you don't look at that remote and be like, no, I don't like it. I'm not going to do it, and you walk away as if. No one does that. Everyone sits no. <laughs> down and figures it out, right? Everyone sits down and figures it out because they want to use the TV. So if you want to use a tool hard enough, you're going to learn to use it, right? Like it just is. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great way of putting it. So you finished your one year and you did good? You passed like good marks, medium yeah. marks? Good? Passed it. I passed it. Um, I got my, I got a few GMAW tickets out of it. Nice. Didn't get my SMAW. I was really upset with myself. Bummer. Because, you know, now, now I love stick welding. And back then I just, I couldn't get it. <laughs> took me a few years <laughs> uh everyone's got their highs and lows everyone's like i'm yeah. not the best at aluminum tig i just kind of can't seem to get my head around it i'm not bad but i see other people just do these beautiful welds and i'm just like ooh, if i sat down <laughs> all day i might be able to hammer that one out <laughs> but you know what you, it's I'll, one bead <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but if, if anyone wants to throw down for some stick or mig i'm down so yeah <laughs> Now, you, you graduated. Did you find uh, getting a job was hard or easy? Did you slide into one pretty good? Um, I slid into one pretty good. Uh, I've, you know, I've heard, you know, mixed signals of a lot of women that, you know, have difficulty getting a job because they, they have a woman's name on their resume. But uh, I was pretty lucky. Um, you know, it was a very entry level position that I got. And it was a very great first experience that I had. Um, it was Actually, it was entry level, but it was fabrication. It was, you know, you took your 20 foot piece of steel off the wall and you took it to the bandsaw, you cut it, you measured your parts, everything. And it was really start to finish. And I learned how to use all the different tools. 
I learned, you know, blueprints and uh, it was a great first uh, experience. I actually think that that's kind of like the best case scenario. Um, getting into a shop where there's some fab work and, and, and production where you have to not only cut things well, but you have to kind of be quick and don't waste no time. And I think yeah. that's like best case scenario for a young, a young welder coming out of school. Um, I know all the welders want to go out and work on the rigs and go make the big oil money. But when I run into those welders 10 years later, sometimes they're really lacking some basic skills that you get mm -hmm. from shops. You know, I guess at the end of the day, you kind of want to do it all, right? Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> you kind of want to bounce around and because every new job gives you new skills, right? Yeah. So yeah. how long were you there at this at this company that you were working for? Um, I unfortunately wasn't there too long. I was only there for a couple of months. They they uh they lost a huge job, um, so they had to lay off all the new people, and I was one of them. But I've uh, over the last you know five years, I've dipped my toes in a few different types of welding because I you know coming out of school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I love to weld, but I there's so many different types of jobs out there mm -hmm. and I had no idea what I wanted to do long-term. So I tried, I tried a few different areas to see what I was good at, what I liked, what I didn't like. You know, well, I tried, I was an iron worker for a couple of months and I, I <laughs> that was a big eye opener. And I realized, you know, I don't have the strength for that. Iron work is every a part tough of gig, my body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every part of, part of my body just hurt <laughs> so badly. I know lots of female iron workers that are just killing it. And I've worked with the iron workers many, many times. And uh, yeah, it's, it's tough work. You know, you, you earn that buck. That's for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking at your jobs. You say there's something you really like and something you didn't like so much. What was your favorite job? And then what was your least favorite job? Um, my favorite job was probably my first job. I was pretty bummed out when I got laid off in there. Um, because I really enjoyed the fabrication part of it. My least favorite job was I got into uh, in between jobs and I took a production welding job, which was just MIG welding and you're welding the same part over and over. And that really took away my skill sets from me. And I mean, it's, it was still, you know, still good experience. Every job you have, you're still, you're gonna experience something, right? But it, yeah, production welding, it was, you know, it has to get done and lots of people love it. And I just, I needed my brain to work a little bit more. Yeah. And it's a different part of your brain used in production. Like I worked in production shops for years too. Um, I kind of was like, I liked it. It was okay, but I learned to love it when I started working my way into like supervisor jobs. And then you're like yeah. looking at the whole area production and how can you, you know, manage the production better. That got really interesting for me. All right, yeah. so we're at like the and halfway I... point here, so we're going to have oh. to take our commercial breaks or else we're yeah. going to get in trouble. <laughs> and uh, so we'll be back right away. We're, we got Daniela Torelli here. Uh, did I say that right? Yeah. yeah Daniela Torelli. And uh, she's here to talk to us about her life and her journey. I'm Max Ron with you guys on the CWB Association podcast, and we'll be right back. The CWB Group is Canada's National Welding Certification Organization. We're pleased to offer welder testing at our state-of-the-art facility in NISCU. We provide welders the opportunity to practice for and take a CSA W47.1 welder qualification test. Book your welder qualification test with Canada's welding experts. Give us a call today at 1-800-844-6790 or visit us online at cwbgroup.org to book your training or testing slot. The CWB Group. We are welding. The CWB Association membership is new, improved, and focused on you. The CWB Association is offering a free membership with a full suite of benefits to anyone interested in joining an association that is passionate about welding. Build your career, stay informed, and support the Canadian welding industry. Become a member today. Register at cwbassociation.org. And we're back here on the CWB Association podcast. I'm Max Ron with you guys as always. And we got Daniela telling us about her awesome jobs and her not so awesome jobs. And now we're leading up to the point where she is today, where she's sitting in her life. So after you floated around for about five years, had some jobs, got your skills up. Did you get your journey person? Did you, have you gotten your journey person yet? No, no, I never did. Do you yeah, plan on that was something. It? Um, 
At the moment, no. So actually my production, my last job was production welding and I actually got moved into the quality department. Okay. So I got put into QR and that made me look into getting my level one inspection. Okay. And the, do so you I have actually that? was kind of, yeah, I was going towards more of that route. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being in a production shop, seeing, you know, there's a lot of robotic welding there as well. And, uh, and I got to, you know, start helping with inspecting welds and I, I kind of really liked it. So I thought, Oh, maybe I need to look into this now. And have you taken the level one course already? Yeah. So I did the course. I actually did it right before COVID happened. So I completed the course and then everything shut down. So <laughs> I still have to do my, my midterm and my exam. It's just a matter of, you know, restudying everything now. <laughs> So now, I, so now everyone can call you a weld narc? Yeah, yeah. I'm that person that all the welders are going to hate. <laughs> well, it depends. You only hate them if you're not a good welder, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I obviously have never had an issue with an inspector in my life. All of you, it's just check marks everywhere. But Yeah, you know. of course. <laughs> so, so, so COVID hits, you just got your level one. So have you been able to get out on a job as a level one inspector yet? Nope. So I still have to do my testing. So I've, uh, I've been laid off actually. So these past couple of months, I've still been laid off and, uh, I've been really toning in since I've had a lot of more free time on my hands on my own little side business of, uh, I've got my own little TIG welder at home. So I've been uh, doing a lot of, uh, I make some horseshoe decor and some metal art. So I've had some more time to practice that. And, you know, that's a theme that we've had on so many shows is people that do this cre- creative art in the background, um, their side hustles, which is something that I feel like if you're a welder and you don't have a side hustle, you're not really a welder. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Go I, out, buy your own machine. It's worth it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I come across that all the time. It's like these people, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm the best welder in town. It's like, oh, yeah, well, cool. I'll come by your garage and we can weld something. Oh, I don't got a welder at home. Yeah, what? You, <laughs> you can't. You gotta yeah. have at least one welder at home. Like, geez. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the best welder. No. Like, just to have it. <laughs> so, you know, you got your level one. You're kind of that's your career path, which you know, it's it's really important now. Like, inspection is a booming thing, and what's happening lots is that in the past there was these huge inspection companies that would be running. But now a lot of people are running their own gigs. A lot of small independent inspection places are, you know, maybe two or three inspectors of various levels kind of work. And where do you see yourself going with your career as a level one inspector? Do you see yourself maybe setting up an inspection company or do you want to get a job inspecting for somebody? Well, I was looking more towards um, down the road. I wanted to become a welding educator. And I noticed when I, you know, had this time off, I was doing a lot of research on, you know, what kind of, what specifications that they needed. And Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of teachers that they had their level one inspection that, you know, that was a good job prerequisite. So I was kind of aiming, just kind of building up my resume and just trying to, you know, down the road of becoming an educator. And I I didn't quite know exactly what I wanted to do. And, you know, COVID, it was just like, well, I don't know what's next year going to look like. Yeah, and and through your search of being an educator, which is a tough thing to get into because, like, I mean, I've been yeah. working at the college for seven years, and it's not easy to get into these jobs. And for the people that are looking to get into teaching jobs in the trades, it's it can be tough. You're on the, you can be on the casual list for years before getting something full time. I was casual for two years, and oh. in my seven years at the college, I I've only really been full time three of seven. And thank God I still got my company and my and my hustles on the side. But, uh, yeah. you know, schools are up and down. You never know. It depends on how many people are applying, right? So. Yeah, no, I got uh, very, very lucky. And I am still in shock that, you know, this has even happened. But I am currently employed now by CWB in Milton as an assistant welding instructor for one of their new West programs. And I... It just happened overnight, and I am still still in shock and did, super super thankful. <laughs> did you just apply online, or did you did someone there tell you, hey, you should check out this job? Or I I did not apply, and this is where the power of social media <laughs> just hammering I, on the front door. Let me in. <laughs> I kid you not, I did not apply, 
Um, this is where I'm all about social media because social media got me this gig. And a friend of mine that was actually in the program was showing her instructor my my work, my my social media page. And he saw something and he said, you know, I want her email. I want to contact her. And he contacted me, you know, talked to me, you know, wanted to know about me. And, you know, we started, you know, talking and I, I mentioned to him, you know, would love to pick his brain about, you know, how he became an educator. And, and that's kind of like my long-term goal. Next, next day, I got a phone call, you know, talking about this new West program that the CWB is offering right now. And, uh, they started talking about the program. I'm like, oh, that's really great. That's awesome. And they're like, yeah, we really need some help. And, you know, we'd love for you to join our team. And I was just like, what? <laughs> like starstruck. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I must have jumped so high. I was like dancing everywhere. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And, you know, they they really took a chance on me. They they saw something in me and and they went for it. And I, I'm still in shock. Well, you're not done probation yet, so. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I, I hope I'm making a. <laughs> I hope I'm making a good, you know, first impression. Uh, so far, I think I am, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's a little difficult, you know. I these past, you know, couple of months, I I have a two-year-old son, and you know, we've been both been home all day, every day for co- during COVID, and. I'm used to talking to a two-year-old and then going to, you know, helping teach <laughs> adults. I was like, oh, hold on. <laughs> Don't touch that. Was, don't don't touch that. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, quite quite different. <laughs> so, first of all, explain your role as an assistant instructor. What is what do you do in your daily job? Like what's what are the roles that you have to do? So, I'm going around to all the different booths, you know, watching everyone well, uh giving them some pointers, helping them, you know, set their machines up. Pretty much I'm there to help assist the teacher, the instructor. So, if he needs me, you know, if he's got to go do some emails or, and, you know, he's got to go do something else, I can step in and help with the students. And, you know, there's, there's 12 of them, right? So it's, you know, I'm sure, I don't know how many people you have in your classes, but, we you know, one in 12 as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, one instructor for 12 students, it can be a lot sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I'm there to help make his life a little easier and to help, you know, instruct with the, the students as well. And then the courses that you're teaching through CWB at Milton, you know, I'm not even aware of the courses that are offered there. So what are you teaching? So it's actually, it's with uh, Skills for Change. And um, it's a course just helping, you know, giving some some like base information on um, GMAW, um, FlexCore, FCAW, and, um, and we're really just helping anyone that was kind of in between jobs or trades that wanted to learn kind of the basics of welding. And, um, is it like a one week course or two week or a month? No, it's actually a 12 week program. Oh, so that's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's been great. And it's full time, like every day, Monday to Friday, Yeah, Monday to Friday, you know, we're in there every day and students are really eager to learn. And some of them have welded before and some of them have never welded. So it's a great mix of students. Awesome. And then the other thing that you brought up was the newly minted West program that's running out of CWB. So what is the West program? So that is the West program. Okay. Yeah. So the West program is with Skills for Change. Okay. So it's a government funded program. So what does West stand for? Um, <laughs> <laughs> am I, I going to have to Google this? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh workers no oh my god workplace oh my goodness i <laughs> this, is, this is really bad right i just sit here making a great impression and now i just dropped it hey I, i'm <laughs> i'm the interviewer i'm just i'm just i just got off work like, <laughs> I'm, so I'm, I'm the one that's throwing the trick questions at you and getting me all <laughs> flustered here well i'm sure people can google it and look it up i don't want to put yeah, you on the spot so too sorry much. hopefully your boss isn't listening no. <laughs> i know oh my goodness here we go so who's the... Uh, who's, now, who's... now I just lost my job. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Well, maybe I can hire you. Maybe I can hire you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to come up there. <laughs> uh, who is your... Who's the main instructor? Who's your? Who's the instructor you're working with? Donna. I don't know if you maybe um, cross paths with him. Don? What's his last name? Um, McInview, if I'm saying that correctly. Mm, I'm pretty sure I've seen 
his emails. I don't, I, you know, I go to all the CWB stuff. I'm sure I've met him. I'm just terrible with names. Oh, and here, here's what the West, West program stands for. It's a workplace essential skills cool. <laughs> training program. Training. And that's, yeah, for, and that's something that's offered out in Milton. Hopefully, um, we get some of that programming out here in the on the west side of Canada. You guys out in Ontario get all the good stuff. Jeez. Yeah. It's just not fair. You're we're just going to have to come here. Well, And we got these long winters, you know, where we're just freezing, you know, our cojones off where we could be doing these training programs. But I, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, rub it in <laughs> too much, but... You know, we had like 20 degrees here the other day. <laughs> I literally was talking to my friends over at Cyrus uh, uh, Welding Cameras in Toronto, Sudbury, Ontario. And uh, okay. they were like, oh, it's like plus 18 here today. And I was like, man, I got like two feet of snow outside. Like, I, I don't know if you saw my Instagram. I had to put my Mustang away. I'm all sad. Yeah, my, my car's gone now till May. And I'm driving. This, now I'm driving the big old four wheel drive pickup truck. And that's not as fun. No. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you can keep all that snow. I don't want it for another month or so. <laughs> well, I'm going to send it your way. Don't worry. It's it's coming. Oh, it's coming. I got to share. Yeah. <laughs> so now that you're with the, the West program and, you, and you're with in the arms of CWB group, what do you see now as possibilities uh, in, with your career and yourself as a, as a level one inspector, but also as a woman? You know, like, do you do you look to move? within the company are you hoping this will be like a bounce spot for you to go somewhere else or so the program only runs right now until the middle of december and that's actually continuing with another group of students in january so i'm leaning towards more staying into with the cwb and uh, you know kind of i'm really really enjoying you know teaching and uh helping students and it's bringing me great deal of uh, happiness of, you know, helping somebody and, and troubleshooting. And, you know, it's, I didn't realize, you know, I was thinking long-term being an instructor and helping and never thought that it would happen now in my life. And uh, I did not realize how much I was going to enjoy it. So that's awesome. And, you know, I, I, from my point of view, looking at you and what's, what's going on in your career, I would advise very much to stay in the CWB as long as you can. And, Get as much training, get as much training as you can. I mean, you're in an organization that has a, a lot of training opportunities that they offer themselves. Um, I'm not 100% sure how it works at CWB. You got train right by your house? Sorry, the train. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I grew up by a train. I have train tracks right behind my house, and I'm like, all the this whole entire time, I'm like, please don't come by, please don't come by. <laughs> I grew up by train tracks. That just triggered me hard. I was like seven years old. There you again. go. <laughs> so, but like, I mean, uh, we, we need young people to start moving into management gigs. Like, I mean, there is so many talented welders out there. I always tell this, everyone I talk to, it's not hard to find a good welder. There's lots of people out there with crazy good hand skills, but we need a smart welders. We need people that got, you know, good brains and are not scared of the office work, are not scared of the development work or the, you know, the speaking work, the social media work, because we need to open the trades up and we need young people to move up into bosses, especially women. Like I go to the CWB board of directors events or the, you know, educators conference and it's like 300 guys and like two women. And that's got to change. Like we need, we got Susan Crowley, you know, who's, who's running foundation. That's awesome. We got a female leader. We need more female leaders. We need, we need more female owners. We need more female testers, teachers, all that stuff, you know? Well, maybe I'll see you there next time. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will. I'll be at all of them. And, and, you know, I don't really miss any opportunity to get out to a conference. Um, you should definitely be asking about fab tech in Chicago next year. Great time. Oh uh, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's on my list for next year. Hopefully fingers crossed, you know, hopefully everything happens next year, but yeah, that's, that's a goal of fab tech. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about your, your, your online presence, your think pink welding, right? Yeah, that's me. So your think pink welding that's on Instagram. Do you also have a Facebook or LinkedIn or anything like that? Or just Instagram? Yeah. Um, so I've got Facebook, which is at Think Pink Welding, and then I've got a website that's thinkpinkwelding.com. And what do you do? So I make horseshoe home decor and dipping my toes into more metal art. Um, when I was pregnant, uh, three years ago for Christmas, I said, you know, I'm not, not buying my friends Christmas presents this year. So I said to my friends, they're all horse people. I said, 
everyone give me your horseshoes. I'm making everyone gifts this year. That's the great thing about being a welder is I can make gifts. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I made a whole bunch of different things out of horseshoes and, you know, they displayed these items in their homes and people saw them and they were like, oh my God, like I want one of those. Like where'd you get them? And next thing I knew I was getting orders and it's just boomed in the last three years. That's awesome. So like, do you sell locally or are you actually like shipping like all over the place? Uh, so far I'm shipping everywhere. Um, haven't got any, you know, European orders yet, but I'm aiming for that, but no, I've shipped to the States. I just shipped out uh, a boot raft to Texas last, uh, last week and uh, I shipped Canada wide and, uh, I've got uh, my items in free retail, local stores, which is awesome. And uh, I became a part of uh, an arts council this year. I'm a member of the Sussimco Arts Council. And I entered my first art exhibition, which was oh, cool. amazing. Yeah. The never, never thought that would ever happen. <laughs> well, it sounds like you just really are combining all your life's passions into one big nugget now, right? <laughs> yeah. It's always this kind of, you know been a side hustle I kind of just you know did it for fun you know my my time off I you know I'd always start making stuff any any time I could get I was welding so it was always for fun and it's just boomed into a business and you loved horses and grew up around horses so you have access to horseshoes yeah yeah I've got I own uh, too many you think I'd be the luckiest person ever <laughs> the amount of horseshoes I own <laughs> <laughs> when I bought the house i live in now i was cleaning out the garage because we bought it off some old people and i think they died or something but they had left a bunch of stuff behind and i found a horseshoe in the garage and i nailed it above the entranceway because i thought that was a thing that i read once that it's good luck yeah. to have a horseshoe above the entranceway so i put it up there and uh in the, the five six maybe seven years i've been in this house now working in the shop i haven't uh, started a fire or cut my finger off so it must be lucky there you go yeah. <laughs> Like, there you uh, go and, and you know i guess i haven't done that either so i guess i'm pretty lucky <laughs> well you meet a lot of welders with uh less than like nine and a half fingers <laughs> so like it, it, it's pretty normal yeah <laughs> okay well that pretty much wraps wraps up the uh interview um daniela is there anything that you'd like to kind of say to people that are listening any shout outs you want to do or any any tidbits of wisdom uh, i just want to say thank you so much for having me here um, you know, power to all the different women. I'm so thankful that I know so many women in the trades and, and welders themselves and, uh, you know, never give up, you know, I'm, I'm a single mom and I've been, you know, it never stopped me from, uh, from finishing and continuing with my welding career. And, you know, you can have a family and still be a woman in the trades and, and that really needs to become more elaborate, you know, in the, in life. And, uh, and I hope people just, you know, stick with what they want to do with their passions. Awesome. That's great advice. And, it, and it's so true. You know, if you want it, you can have it. If you want to, if, and if you want it bad, you can have it bad. So yeah, for awesome. sure. Well, thanks a lot. And I really appreciate you taking Thank the time you. to be on the show and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, they'll send this out and it'll be on, on Stitcher and Spotify and everything else. So thank you to the people listening to the show. That was Daniela Torelli. And, uh, you know, make sure you download the podcast, make sure you share them, make sure you hit us up on Instagram. Uh, we're trying to spread this as much as we can and, and really trying to get as many cool guests as we can. So if you guys know anybody out there that you think would be a good fit for the show, send them my way. Ask Max at CWB dot or CW, CWB group dot org. That's what it is. It's Ask Max at CWB group dot org. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyway, you'll find me on Instagram. All right. Well, take care and I'll talk to you all you guys later. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. We hope you enjoy the show. You've been listening to the CWB Association Welding Podcast with Max Serrano. If you enjoyed what you heard today, rate our podcast and visit us at cwbassociation.org to learn more. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions or suggestions on what you'd like to learn about in the future. Produced by the CWB Group and presented by Max Haran. This podcast serves to educate and connect the welding community. Please subscribe and thank you for listening.